Hey, happy 2011. I'm Elric Ferris. Welcome once again to the motherboards.org YouTube channel here on the internet. Okay, well as most of you guys know, the Intel Sandy Bridge has finally made its day into the sun. You guys have probably already watched our previous video where we tested the 2600K and the P67BG motherboard. Well now we're gonna test the CPU that's right underneath that. This is the new 2500K CPU. Now, the main difference between this CPU and the other one is that this CPU runs at 3.3 gigahertz, and when the turbo kicks in, it's at 3.7 gigahertz. It has six megabytes of level three cache versus the eight megabytes of level three cache that you had on the i7. By the way, this is the i5 version of the CPU, if I didn't mention that. This is the i5 2500K. For this testing, we're gonna use the H67BL motherboard. This motherboard has the onboard graphics. So we tested the motherboard with just the standard test, and then we tested it with the onboard graphics to show you how that does. So follow along, let's check out how this motherboard is, and let's see if these onboard graphics are all that they're cracked up to be. And at the end of the day, whether it's worth your money to buy this new CPU and motherboard chipset. So the tests are in. Now, this CPU is really not that much slower than the 2600K. And the onboard graphics, they work okay. Would I recommend these onboard graphics to anybody who plays serious gaming? Even though really Intel is trying to push that, I would still have to say no. Call of Duty was barely playable. Now, if you play games like StarCraft and stuff like this, sure, of course, the Intel integrated graphics are gonna play that, no problem. But when you're playing all these advanced games that take high-end DirectX and take all this stuff that includes physics and stuff, there's no way that the onboard Intel graphics are going to be into play. One thing I want you to know is that the 2500K has no hyper-threading. Now, for some overclockers, this may be a good thing because many of my overclocking friends, they disable the hyperthreading when overclocking. For you guys out there who wanna do that, then this new 2500K may be the CPU for you because it's automatically has the hyperthreading disabled. Beyond that, it's a pretty good CPU. Now, as I said before, this CPU comes in at about $294 and this CPU compares to last year's i5-667 CPU. So all in all, I think that Intel has a winner here because when you compare it to last year's products to this year's product, Intel is succeeding in bringing higher performance, GPU performance, and lower power consumption to the table. These are all successful things for Intel. So at the end of the day, I give the new 2500K and the 867BL chipset an editor's choice here at motherboards.org.